Okay, good evening and welcome to our board meeting. If we could uh, have a roll call, Mr. Weber, please. Mr. DeMacchia. Yes. Mr. Fellis. Present. Mr. Smith. Present. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. President, Vice President, Board Members, Dr. Branham, Mr. Uh, Weber. Today we will have sixth grade student Jadis Butler from Gerald Johnny Wilson Middle School lead the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Jadis is the son of Miss Darnisa Watkins and has three siblings, William Butler, seventh grade at GJW, James Butler, fourth grade at Washington, and Cableton, Presswood, third grade at Washington. Jadis participates in band and Spartans football through just four kids. His favorite subject is reading. After the pledge, Jadis will speak on the importance of Black History Month. Jadis' principal, Mr. Michael Scott, is here tonight to support his student. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. When I think of black history, I think of Martin Luther King Jr. fighting for freedom, George Washington Carver, a scientist and biologist making 105 products out of peanuts. Madam C.J. Walker designing hair products for women of color and becoming a self-made millionaire. When I think of black history, I think of my mother, the color of the earth, and to me, she gave birth, life. She is my black history because of her, I am a good person, helpful, thoughtful, and creative. She is the product of life that began before her. I am the product of life that began before me. We are the collective memories of life that changed the world. So when you ask what does black history mean to me, I must tell you that it means achievement in the face of adversity with faces that look like me. Will the parent of Jadis please stand up to be recognized? <laughs> Jadis, thank you for your presentation on the importance of Black History Month. As appreciation for leading us with the Pledge of Allegiance and your speech, I would like to give you the certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Recognition of visitors. Phone check, everybody. It's time we need a motion uh, to approve or amend the signed minutes of the regular session meeting held on February 9th, 2012. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. DeMacchia? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fallis? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mm -hmm. At this time, uh, we will prepare for our first hearing of the public. Um, based on um, some of the uh, occurrences as of today, I'm sure that there will be some questions and challenges in those things. We just ask that you please be respectful, um, be uh, courteous and responsive to the three minute allocation of time. And um, feel free to express yourselves. Uh, Paul Bieber, 2128 East 29th Street. Mr. Bieber, sorry. Yes. Can you please, we sign in here, uh, can you come to the podium that's directly in front? They'll give okay. you a, a yeah, right. mic. Is there a mic there? Yeah, they'll, they'll give you one. Sorry about that. <clears throat> you hadn't been here since we changed that. Thank you, sir. You guys good? 
Okay, first thing I'd start out positively here, congratulate the board on hiring two local firms to assist with the uh, major firm that you uh, hired as an architectural firm, glad to see that. And it's my firm hope that they can use their creative energies to help improve on the rather mediocre designs I saw trotted across the board this morning over at Spetzer Conference Center. Um, I want to say firsthand that I, I disagree with this plan to move the students over to, to Southview. And before doing that, and, and saying why. Uh, this is the result of being forced by a, a segment of the public along with misinformation from some representatives from the state for not building on the river site. You would not have any of these problems or necessitate to do any of these things if you built it on that clean site with no power lines or anything obstructing the view. Uh, I understand the problem that the architect has with the Admiral King site. You've got to wedge it in behind the existing building, and that's going to cramp the design standards and also cause some uh, construction problems. But for four million bucks, I think they ought to be able to figure it out. The move to Southview is unacceptable in both an educational sense. I don't care what plan anybody drives up, draws up. It's going to be disruptive to the educational process. There's going to be decline in discipline and decide, decline in academic performance. Furthermore. I don't see the room at Southview or the additional buildings, and general fund money being spent to make that move makes no sense when we've got to cut $12 million out of the existing budget. I don't care about the $380,000 for the sale of two buildings. The cost is going to be more than that, and we all know that. Uh, I think what the driving force on all this is that everything that I've seen in terms of the budgets has included several million dollars for demolition of the Admiral King and the Southview buildings, None of, neither of which has been decided by this board. Uh, if you don't build on the Admiral King site, you don't have to demolish the Admiral King building, the Lorraine, current Lorraine High building. There are several million dollars that are allocated to that, and I think that's the driving force behind all of this. We now have in excess, or close to $10 million, and probably will have in excess of $10 million of locally funded money that will allow us on the river site to overcome the grossly inflated $3 million estimate for spread footers on that site because of soil, con soil weakness and wetness. Uh, I urge a reconsideration and a relook at the river site because it will, necess it will make all, all of this unnecessary and, and be a more productive learning environment. Thank you for your time. Thank you. If there are no more individuals who would like to make statements or questions, we will move on to old business. The first item is to remove from the table uh, the June 2012 graduation date motion. So may we have a motion to take that off the table? Motion to remove from the table. Support. Roll call. Second. Second with Mr. DeMacchia. First was Mr. Mike. Mr. Sturgill. Mr. Sturgill was first. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. DeMacchia. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Fells. Yes. The last meeting there was a motion um, to solidify the date for graduation. Um, that date was, can you, someone? It's uh, currently set for Sunday, June 3rd. And I need a motion so that we can enter discussion. Motion, 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 motion to, to approve, approve the date. Date, Sunday, June 3rd. Second. Discussion? The date has already been approved. Correct. This was, I think that was. You um, may want to reaffirm the date, but the date was. The, the date we did some time ago in the calendar yes. when, we, when we approved the calendar. This came forward again because, well, actually, I'm not totally sure why. Um, I know there was, we tabled this and um, we could have went ahead, but there was some discussion that we wanted to have. Uh, if I could familiarize folks with the, the history, um, we had concluded on this date last year, but not as a choice date. We had selected a Saturday, I believe, and that came into conflict with the state track meet. That's so we just deferred to Sunday. So there was never any pre-discussion in terms of the merit of Sunday. And so we wanted to give some opportunity. Um, I think some of our research has proven, I think um, Jostens and some of the companies have already been in and they have started doing announcements and those things. Um, so uh, we don't want to 
um, interrupt any of that. People have made plans. And um, so uh, the, the will, I think, is we want to move forward. But I want to give that clarity. Mitch, you have a little more background now, how we got to this Sunday date. Um, and uh, so I think, is everybody satisfied that we can move ahead now? I don't have any problem with any date as long as we're consistent. I and mean, when, we, when, we uh, when, we, when we set the calendar, I believe that's when we approved the date, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but we did it for a number of years. And I'm, only, I'm going to vote for the date for this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I think we need to discuss. Yeah, I, I have no problem going, going back to uh, I, I'm not a weekday or anything. But I just, I just, just yeah. want to be consistent. Yeah, and I think, you know, whether it's a weekday or a weekend, there was some wisdom in some discussion that landed us on that Saturday. Mm. Moving to the Sunday was based on no decision, based on no information at all. Now, the board didn't have discussion, so I would hope that um, we can enter, if we need to enter discussion on which date it should be and have a hearty discussion, and if there are reasons why we want to move it to a weekend, state those so that we can evaluate the merits of them, and then we can make a decision, and then again, when we make it, we want to stay there. I mean, we just... Um, well, I think we need to get input from parents whose children are the ones that are going to be graduating. And I would suggest, and if this is possible, Mr. Sturgill or Principal Conover, to survey the current junior and maybe uh, sophomore classes, let parents have a little input in this. Traditionally, the district has had weekend or, or evenings during the week. Uh, is that your recollection, Dr. Branham? That's correct. And that seemed way back when we had three high schools. When we had three high schools. So uh, I would just, <clears throat> I don't care, because I, don't ha I won't have any more student children graduating, but I'd like to know what the parents and the students think. So is there a way we could do a survey of some kind? and have that before we vote on the on future Would yes and i think another consideration um that comes to mind when i think of sundays is logistically to do a rehearsal on a friday set up all that stuff on the field and then have to either tear it down or have people working overtime to stay all night and watch it i think there's some real logistics again we landed on sunday not because we desire to and i think that had a cost impact and a facilitating <laughs> negative impact on how to do it. I mean, when we want to change the rain date and the kids have been gone for it, there are a lot of reasons why Sunday's problematic, but we're here now. So um, we're not thoughtless. We're just stuck where we are. Go, going back to uh, Mr. Smith's suggestion of a, uh, polling the parents, would it be easier to put a poll on our website and have the parents access the website? I think it'd be easier to generate the data that way, wouldn't it? Or can we bring this uh, motion to a vote? Yeah. Okay. So we'll the vote is on the vote is on Sunday, June June third. Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> Mr. Demacia. Yes. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Fallis. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Dr. Branham. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, <clears throat> we'd like to do an update on um, your, your block and not me, Dale. <laughs> That's okay. Um, obviously, the cost saving, uh, savings plan update, we're still working to eliminate our $12 million deficit. We're making progress. Again, it's not an e these are not easy decisions. They're very difficult decisions, but ones that have to be made. Our, obviously, our goals with the Lorraine City Schools on this cost savings plan is to, in fact, fix the $12 million deficit and maintain long-term educational effectiveness and get to uh, financial solvency. Our next, our next steps in this cost savings process, and again, we go back to the original plan and what we've been doing 
the last two months in January and February and what the intent to do for March through August once we have the plan approved, ready to implement. Uh, originally, that financial recovery plan by um, ODE statute is that we had to have our recovery plan in by January 24th, 2012. If you recall, on the first board meeting in January, the board um, approved resolutions for cost savings. That was old business items one, two, and three, and I'll show you what that savings uh, happened to be. Again, these are already approved and technically implemented. Uh, the board also authorized the treasurer to apply for a 30-day extension from ODE, which we, we did receive approval for that extension. Um, and again, the financial recovery plan, uh, item three. Uh, Mr. Weber then did a financial modeling presentation in regard to retaining uh, where we were on deficit and where we needed to go. The last board meeting in January, we had the representation of Roger Nels from the Ohio Department of Education uh, outlining and discussing fiscal emergency. And Mr. Weber also did a presentation on options for our next tax, tax levy. This month, uh, again, we're going to update and review our cost reduction plan. And hopefully the board tonight will approve the financial recovery plan because it is in fact due to the Ohio Department of Education on or before February 25th, 2012. Since this is the 22nd of February, uh, we need to get action on this tonight. And again, March through August, uh, we will implement under the direction of the Board of Education to implement this plan. Here's what we've done. Uh, this board has approved and completed the following cost saving items. I'm not going to do a lot of detail here because we've been over this the last three board meetings at least, but we, those that have already been approved, you can see we're at $3.5 million. Um, again, not easy decisions by this board, but they were remote, um, made voted on and improved and implemented. Uh, the reductions from the way back in October of $1.1 million, the Charleston Reorganization organization Plan that uh, reduced the deficit by 400,000, the athletic re uh, reductions that we talked about and got approval on have been implement implemented. High school busing uh, at a savings of $240,000, the Chinese and Spanish immersion plan uh, eliminated for next year. Um, this was on originally at $100,000 savings. What we've done, we obtained per permission from ODE to uh, reconstruct and refigure our SFA delivery. We were gonna do an 80%, 20%, where 20%, uh, actually it was gonna be seven SFA facilitators that were going to be reduced in force. Um, we got permission to rearrange that and restructure that so we could get 100% grant funded. And therefore, since we do not have to reduce those SFA facilitators, they'll be more into intervention uh, administrators. And we do not have to deal with the unemployment piece here. Um, we're actually saving an additional $135,000. That was originally $100,000. That's improving service to our kids, um, as well as saving the general fund uh, quite a bit of money. You, as a board, imp uh, implemented the half-day kindergarten for a savings of $737,000. We eliminated uh, AEA, uh, the academy. Those children will go into their uh, neighboring schools. We have room for that. Uh, the savings of $295,000. And of course, um, last month we uh, reduced supplemental contracts, the non athletic uh, co curricular clubs and activities to the tune of $230,000. So the total approved and completed savings that this board has implemented, uh, my team has implemented. 
along with a board approval of three and a half million dollars. Those items that are approved and in process, which are cost-saving items, if you recall, the itinerant positions were reduced, some fine arts and other areas, a tune of close to $500,000. We maintained some of those fine arts programs, if you recall. We're still looking at reducing four administrative positions um, of $224,000 savings. We uh, took the item off of outsourcing safety officers, uh, the safety officer program, because we're going to, the board attorney along uh, with HR, we're going to request early negotiations with the United Steelworkers. We think that we can equate um, $100,000 savings or more based on negotiations. If you recall, we had some issues on workers' compensation and attendance problems. Um, I think we're going to be able to um, at least get to $100,000 savings by addressing uh, the new contract and labor negotiations. The further reduction in force is the RIF that would be across all employee groups to the tune of $2.7 million dollars. Uh, we've been talking and speaking to 75 to 125 individual positions. Um, we will know more now and we will come back to the board with exact reduction in force in the bargaining units uh, because of some decisions that were made this morning by this board and I'll get back to that on another slide. Uh, so this will be uh, further explained in meetings down the road. This brings us to uh, an additional $3.5 million in savings and reductions. Um, we have an action item tonight to close mass and school building and redistrict. This is item eight on your board agenda and I will explain, explain that in detail with slides uh, coming down here in a minute. Um, we're gonna, we think that uh, we're, we will save $375,000 um, in reductions. This plan, uh, this recovery plan, we are at, with this approved uh, action items and those in process and those under consideration tonight will get us to $7.3 million in reductions. Um, as a result, one of the directives from this board was for my team to um, close a building. The school board had a partnering session uh, with our architects and our construction manager, and um, they actually made three decisions this morning that would enable uh, me to put this item on the agenda tonight at a cost savings of $375,000. Obviously, Masson is the building that uh, it's obvious that we can take an alternative school out of there and close that building. It's old, needs a lot of renovations and updates. But we're gonna save one administrative position. We're not sure if that's gonna be a principal or an assistant principal, um, but that's included in that savings. We'll know more as we get closer into the detail of redistricting. One custodian, two cleaners, one secretary, and utilities cost. Just as a reminder, if you recall, AEA, our Academic Enrichment Academy, those students return to their home schools. We, the board's already approved this. The credit recovery program will be maintained. We, we've never talked about uh, dismantling that. It's a good program um, and we want to maintain it and keep it. It will be moved to a new construction location. This is a, a brief overview of our con uh, cons uh, consolidation and restructuring plan for 2012-13. Um, again, as a result of the partnering session this morning, this board agreed to um, technically close Lorraine High School and move the students 10th and 12th, 10th, 11th and 12th graders to the old Southview High School. 
yes, we do need to spend some money on um, the renovation of Southview minimally. Um, and the ninth grade and CRA, I mentioned the credit recovery before, that we feel we can get those students into the new Southview High School, remove the middle school students from there, and combine them into the two middle schools, grades seven and eight, is what the format would look like, the construction there, the Longfellow Middle School and General Johnny Wilson Middle School. So we would have two middle schools, Lorraine High School campus. We like the concept of a high school campus with ninth graders right across the street at, uh, that will be there at Southview Middle School and the 10th through 12th graders will be at Old Southview High School. Again, with a high school campus concept. That leaves us with the 10 elementary buildings, uh, schools, grades pre-K through six, and we, we will be working uh, in redistricting all 10 elementary schools. We're not there yet. We will bring to the board numbers in the coming weeks in regard to what this is going to look like with student numbers and staff, of course. Um, the New Beginnings Academy, grades three through 12, remains at Lowell, the Lowell site. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. I'm sure there are a lot of questions and issues that need to be addressed. Um, that started actually this morning at the uh, special board meeting. Um, I met with the uh, high school staff, with the principal and two uh, uh, members of my academic team and discussed in, in detail uh, and address their concerns and questions. There, there will be a lot more. We will have additional meetings in the community regarding not only Lorraine High School, the move, uh, the middle school, uh, ninth grade high school concept, and the two middle schools. I, tomorrow I will um, meet with the uh, Southview Middle School staff as well to address their concerns. And as we move through the redistricting plan, we will be having parent forum, forums, community forums out there to discuss and talk with parents, teachers, children, staff, what have you. Uh, at this point in time, uh, Mr. Weber is going to talk about the final financial recovery plan that's due to the Ohio Department of Education and give you some details in that regard. Okay, the, over the weekend, I gave the Board of Education uh, Excel document, looks like this, I'm not gonna go over it line by line. This is the format from the Ohio Department of Education, and the first column is the forecast back in October for 2011-12, the second column is the forecast for 2011-12 right now, and the third column is next year's, next year's forecast. And if, uh, after all numbers get looked at, you can still, we're still $4.7 million in the negative over there. So if I fast forward back to the PowerPoint presentation, you can see the right hand side there, 4,698,810. This is the recovery plan that's due by the 25th of February, and it's hooked into information that Dr. Brand just presented, and really it's a conglomeration of about four or five months of work. That plan gets massaged about every week. The numbers change a little bit here or there as new information comes up, but at the point in time today, it, uh, you can see what it is. Now, the key message there is that uh, for next year, as of February 22nd, we're still $4.7 million in the, in the negative. So, there were some discussions over the last couple of days about some of the um, savings and how we can get through some of this information as we move forward in time. So I, I gave the Board of Education <clears throat> Bear with me as I get myself set up here. You can see that row that says ending fund balance 
you can see where it says minus four million six ninety eight eight oh nine move across from left to right those are the balances as they stand today if nothing happens that incorporates and bakes in the effects of that cost recovery plan Dr. Brennan just went over. So what happens next? What's the next thing that happens? Well, as we had talked about, if we can pass a, say a 4.9 mil levy, which generates about almost $3 million a year in revenue, and would cost the taxpayer with the $100,000 home about $12.5 a month, we could certainly make that deficit bit, uh, get better and get smaller. But you can see where it says fiscal year 12-13, right there, we're still $3.2 million in the hole. So we have talked about if we can't pass the levy, what do we do? Well, that's where that fiscal emergency concept comes in. And my opinion is still, unless something drastically changes, will be in next year. So if we borrow, I should say that's the wrong word. We get an advance from the state after we come in fiscal emergency, you pay back over two years. You can see now we're positive going out there as you move left to right across the screen from 622,000 positive to million three to two and a half million dollars. And the trend is up. Upward trend is good. It means you've, we've done some good work to, to get ourselves out of that financial uh, uh, deficit that we're in. So the key points are, Dr. Bram just presented his plan, talked about for four or five months, I've hooked the funds recovery plan in to that cost savings plan. And the way to get, the long-term way to get out of it is to hopefully pass a levy and then we can go into fiscal emergency maybe for just one year and come out uh, on the other end a couple of years from now looking a lot better. So I will pause for questions. This slide is anticipating going into fiscal emergency? Correct. And, and getting advanced? Correct. And you're going back to the first one you showed. I guess I, I'm a little bit, just the original one before you did any. Uh, right there, yeah. I guess I, I'm kind of, confused and how do we go from a 4.6 4.7 million dollar deficit and then the next year the deficit owes only a million dollars more because what happened to the 4.7 well first of all when i pass this, this before you pass 11 yeah that's, okay what happens is assuming the plan gets activated and implemented We'll incur a bunch of unemployment costs in that 12 fiscal year, 12, 13 year. They're not going to incur in fiscal year 13, 14 to the tune of three and a half to four million dollars. Yeah, but that what is unemployment at now? How many weeks? 73, I think. Well, I the, the assumption is like nineteen thousand dollars a person. It's like fifth. It's like 39 weeks at 503 dollars a week at the top end of it, something like that, right around there. So you assume the worst with that, for all the, all the RIF um, uh, corners we have in the forecast, and that's one reason why it gets better, is because of that issue. But it's not going to all go away in one year, because unemployment goes longer than a year. Yeah, but the district doesn't pay for the entire 12, 12 months, as far as I know. The federal government picks in after the turn any weeks in there. That, that's a great question. It looks so, like. So let me yeah. uh, get this correct. If we did, if there was no unemployment, mm -hmm. nobody, they didn't exist. Let's just assume we had no liability there. Right. And you said that was about $4 million? Three and a half to $4 million. Somewhere so that if that here. wasn't there, then what would the deficit be in 2013? 2012 13, would it be? Six hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars? In twelve thirteen, yes, it would be three and a half million dollars less better to the better, yes. In other words, you have included in the four point six, let's just call it four point seven. Yeah. The unemployment. Correct. Additional unemployment costs. So That's that the, the primary reason that the deficit is what it is is the unemployment. Correct. 
but if we didn't have unemployment, we'd still be paying those folks. So then that would I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. We've cut about $7 million, if I recall, out. Right. And replaced that with about $4 million of unemployment. Three and a half to $4 million. I can't remember exactly what it was. Okay. Right. Yes. All right. So, but when you take the total, Dr. Branham, help me here, your, your, your total cuts that, that you showed in your presentation was around seven and a half or somewhere? Seven, seven, yeah, 7 .5 million. 7 .3, I think it was, yeah. Seven three? Seven three, yeah. So you subtract that from the, the original twelve and a half million dollar deficit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And 4.7, which is up there. But then you, the 12.5 million deficit didn't include any unemployment. That's before we cut. That's a true statement. Is right. that right? Yeah, but $7.3 million that Dr. Bram showed has baked an unemployment cost in there. He is showing cutting seven and a half million. 7.3, yes. Is that, is that net of unemployment? Yes. 12 minus the 7.3 is the 4.7. We're fiscal year 12, 13. And your numbers of cuts, you didn't include unemployment, correct? No, I did include unemployment. <laughs> he did. I'm asking about you. Oh, Dr. Branham. Yes, yes, we work on it together. Yeah. That's all that of unemployment cost. Yes. 75 to, uh, you're talking about the seven, 75. In your presentation, employees. when you were all done, considering what we you did included in the unemployment, unemployment cost right. in that, yes. Right. It was netted, though, right? It's all netted. It's all netted. Yeah. When Say you that again? It's netted. It's reduced yes. the additional yes. unemployment. Right. You took your savings in your employee compensation minus what you'd have to pay in additional unemployment. Correct. To come up with your seven point five Correct. million dollars. So you actually cut more than seven point five. In for salary, no. for, for gross salary, the answer yes. is yes. Yes. For gross salary, the answer is yes. <laughs> Right. When you showed your number of 7.5, okay, mm -hmm. you the, the, the actual cutting is much more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I, I think that would have helped if you'd have shown it the way, the it way it was shown, it does. Cut 10 million to get 7 yeah, well, that's, I think that's what. That's correct. I think I would have been more. Where what was going on if it had showed the uh, the true cuts? So you're, you go, you want to go back to that slide? Don't oh, forget that the, the reductions are more than just salary and people. No, no, I, I understand that, Dale. Yeah. But the reductions, if I looked at that, or someone in the audience or the media looked at that, it looks like we've cut seven and a half million dollars, when in fact we've cut more. Right. Yes. See. See, that changes the whole, uh, I didn't understand that. Well, just looking at it, it doesn't, on any of these sheets, it doesn't. Yeah, right, right there, Dale. Yeah. So the 7.4 huh? is actually yeah. correct in See, total net that. cuts, including unemployment cost, right. we're talking about. So you added that back in. Yes. Right. <laughs> Right. Here's a key. Well, that's, he's going to figure out because we're, one is his further reductions in force, two point seven million dollars. Well, not looking at it, how would you understand it? When, when you're showing savings, it looks as though all all you cut was seven point three, when in fact you actually cut eleven. Well, like or, nine. Like huh? nine. This is a net savings. Yes, you're right. This is a net savings figure, what this is. So net I think, savings. I mean, the message to the community is that we, in actuality, cut a total of 11 or something like that. Right. I would say, yes. And then, but, the sa but the savings are reduced. Right by the add-in of the unemployment. That's a correct And then we see a greater savings in the second year. Yeah, that, no, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I just couldn't figure out where your numbers were coming from. Yeah. Right. That's a logical question. Because right. looking at the recovery plan mm -hmm. would assume that we made all of our cuts and we still owe, we're still going to be 4.7 million in the hole when in fact 
of that amount, four million is unemployment benefits. About three and a half. Which will three which three will three eventually half. phase out right. over time. Well, that that's, right. Yeah, right. That's yeah, why I, I I think right. I, I think the public needs to understand the true amount of money that's being cut here. I and then I, I, what I would do is, if that's the case, then take the unemployment out wherever you've put it in, show the true cuts, then. Then, then show that then show that this is not a net savings because of unemployment. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Because it looks as though we didn't cut that much. That's I right. Mean, okay. When in fact we did. Mr. Phelps. Um, just just to clarify uh, Mr. S Smith's point. Uh, would it be correct to uh, say that we really cut 2.7 million dollars plus? $3.5 million in additional unemployment to come up with $6.2 million? Well, in other words, we cut $6.2 million in salary, but we're going to have to pay an additional $3.5 million in unemployment for that salary to come up with a net of $2.7 million. Is that, a, is that a correct statement in understanding your report here? The $3.5 million unemployment cost is the whole page, not just the 2.7. Okay. It's, there are people have other sprinkled in those other ones, salaries too. Salaries in there. Yeah. Okay. Right. You're showing on the explanation page here. Mm -hmm. Decrease in $7,538,305 mm -hmm. for salaries. Right. And then you're adding in the unemployment. unemployment yeah, look, look at the benefits row. You can see how it jumps up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Yes. But, yeah. but it changes the perception that the public has in that we have cut a lot more than 7.3 million. Yeah. We have cut, mm -hmm. if you we had no unemployment. Part, yes, a gross salary. And we added the right. form, we're, we're, we're almost at the 12.5. Yeah. Right. No, 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 but I understand that. But the fact is, in, in, in showing the public what was cut, they need, I believe, the board needs, and if I'm confused on it, which may be understandable, considering I'm an old man and have problems with my name sometimes. <laughs> but what, what these folks report tomorrow is what the public's going to understand. And the true fact is, if in fact it is true, we have cut almost the entire deficit. Is that right? Close. A gross salary. I, I, yeah, all I know is if a gross if, salary plus the other thing, which I'll say you're yeah, close. You're, 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 very, close. Yeah, close. you're saying that 4.3 million is what we're anticipated we owe in unemployment. Worst case scenario. Well, I, I go back and check my exact figures for that. I can go back and look and well, see. Well, I'm looking at your figure here. What it says on there? Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's what it is. Then, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't have it in front of me. So in reality. If we added the 4.3 to the 7.5, that's what the true cuts have been. Right. And I, I think my figures showed that the, you know, the F, just think about this, because some of the savings are moving some of those people into grants, and a couple of folks are like that. I, okay. All, all, I, all my, I want myself and the community yeah. to understand is the, the actual reduction in costs, yeah. not all reductions in force. That's the biggest part of it, but reductions in overall costs right. were, were pretty close to 11 million. I would say you're right, because most of those issues up there, most of them have, are people-related issues. Most of that cost I understand that. is but people Jim, issues. I think Jim is exactly right, and that's yeah. the last message that we need to leave on this particular piece is that, because the more we talk about that, the more ambiguous that becomes. And um, in terms of this deficit piece, since there's going to be no more offered at this moment, I think that clarity is important, that we have cut $11 million. I think it's vital. Yeah. Yes. To, I mean, if we're going to ask taxpayers in November to sacrifice, it's clear they have to have a clear picture of what the district has sacrificed. And it's a heck of a lot more than it looks there. 
and it changes the entire recovery plan, in my opinion. Because in fact, had it not been for the required unemployment, we would not have a $4.7 million deficit. We'd have about 300, 350,000. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. The recovery right. plan is a one year snapshot in time. All they want you to do is look at the next fiscal year to give you some time yeah. to. But I, I don't watch. care what, I'm not worried about Roger Harden and his bunch. They understand it. Yeah. I want to make sure when people read their paper in the morning, they understand the true dollars that have been trimmed with all the hard work you and your team have been putting in. Thank you. And well, it's important that, you know, we get. What people are going to want to, I think, what I'd want to know, what I want to know as a board member, how much have we tightened the belt? And part of the belt tightening is an increase in, a, in an area that we have no control over called unemployment. Right. Yeah, that's our obligation. So it's not that savings. My opinion, it just it needs to be put in, it needs to put in, be into a context where it shows the true savings minus the cost of the savings, which is the unemployment which over time will phase up. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I mean, that's, they'll understand that I'm sure at the Department of Education, but I wanna make sure parents and citizens understand that this district with Ed and his people have done the best they could and still preserve quality education. That's the message right. and, and uh, so, I hope both reporters here have, uh, you know, or they'll ask you the questions after the meeting, because that's the story. The story, in my opinion, is district cuts X number of million dollars, and due to unemployment benefits and all, the true savings the first year will not be that much. Correct. That's correct, Stan. Right. But that'll phase out. It'll phase out. Now, are you assuming in that number how many, what percentage of employees are you assuming will go on unemployment? All of them. 100% because it's at being, an average, you just. Right, it's being a conservative, it's a conservative estimate. Yeah, so no, well, that's what you right. want to be is conservative. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from board members for Mr. Weber before we move on? No, I just want to thank Mr. Smith for his questions. That really helped me understand the uh, 4.7 million deficit for 2012-13 that's 4.7, but 3.5 of that is a one-shot deal for unemployment compensation, and that expense will not be with the Loring City School District after 2012-13, right. going into 13-14. Right. So um, that helps me understand um, the fuller picture. So right. thank we, you. We would be almost at a zero deficit. We'd be, we'd be, we'd be close. And we'd be close. except for the unemployment. Right, we'd be right. close. And that changes my opinion 100% on the recovery plan. Okay. I'm glad we had this discussion for many Me reasons. Me too. <laughs> Maybe we need to uh, all practice up on I'm okay with it too. how we present numbers yeah. okay. to non-professional to non finance people. Well, <laughs> the, the plan up there, that means the next level of detail has to be, if you want to see something like that, Here's the personnel cost, here's the benefits, here's the four or five other columns. We can certainly do that if the board wants to see that. Well, you, what you have is you have a column of cuts yeah. and a column of associated costs with the cuts, which in my, I guess, would only be the unemployment. There are, we're not inheriting any other expenses. Right. Well, in theory, we'd also have a reduction in, in the um, retirement. retirement cost too, and Medicare. Well, wait, wait, you haven't used those? Pardon? When you calculated the uh, the amount of, of cuts in personnel, yes. did you include the benefits or those just? Are baked, the, those are baked in as a timing issue associated with yeah, well, they're the in, way the formula works. You have taken the health care, the state yes. retirement, yes, and the, the actual wage. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Weber, very much. And thank you, gentlemen, for the questions that help with clarity. We are now on to um, the report and recommendations of the treasurer.
Okay, on my agenda, I have four items. The first one is a correction to the minutes of August 3rd, 2011. And the incorrect minutes were put placed in the minute book and the correct minutes were placed as an attachment. So I, I want to put that on the agenda for item one to get that uh, in there. Uh, item two is the January 2012 financial reports. Item three is the approval of the purchase orders greater than $3,000 that need board approval. And item four are a couple of donations. So I'm recommending approval of items. We'll do item one first. Motion to approve. Support. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Demachia? Yes. Mr. Fells? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Recommending approval of items two, three, and four. Motion to approve items two, three, and four. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Demachia? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fallis? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. What, does anyone know what Old School Grove is? Old Lorraine School Grove? I'm guessing you do. Well, they gave us, I just wondered what it was. Shut up, Demachia. Um, it's, it's, it's an organization of some kind? I guess there's no answer out there. Does anyone know? Okay. And recommendations of the superintendent, Dr. Brannon. Well, we thank him anyway. Thank you, Mr. President. Under personnel items, uh, we have uh, the first five uh, under, well, all of the five personnel items are ra rather routine, uh, considering a discontinuance, a new appointment as a substitute paraprofessional, several leaves of absences, spring supplemental contracts uh, in conjunction in accordance with the uh, high revised code negotiated agreement and an intervention specialist, an intervention teacher, recall from reduction in course, uh, reduction in force. Uh, this is not a general fund expenditure, but a school improvement grant expense. I move for a recommend approval of personal items one through five. Motion to approve items one through five. Second. Discussion? Just to make sure the treasurer has, you've got these numbers in your. Are you point, are you talking about something? Yeah, I'm saying these are already accounted for in your yes recovery plan. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Oh, sorry, Mr. Smith, are you are you finished? Yes, sir. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Demachia. Yes. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. Fells. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Item six and seven under operation matters, consider approval of a contract with John Lumen, John Lumen um, Delivery of Atmosphere Adventures Science Enrichment Project at AEA. Item seven is entering into a lease agreement with Dell Computers. Uh, recommend approval of items six and seven under operations matters. Motion to approve. Support. Support. It already came, Mr. Smith, supported. Discussion? Well, I think that's John Lofman, the Channel 19 weather. And I think he needs to come to board meetings and do some forecasting. Hey, he does a really good, <laughs> Help Dale out a little he does bit. a really good job at uh, Credit Recovery. The kids really enjoy it, and it's, yeah. uh, it's done right before the OGC. He's a good guy. Yeah, but weathermen are, you know. They forecast. Right. right. They don't predict. Uh, he's also a soccer official. He should stick to Is he? predicting the weather. <laughs> Does he do both simultaneously? Is he as bad? No, we won't go there. <laughs> Does he do them both simultaneously? <laughs> Is there any more discussion? Can we call this to order? <laughs> There's a motion on the table. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fallis? Yes. Mr. Demachia? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Okay. 
under operation matters item eight consider the approval to close the mass and school building and to redistrict um, just to highlight again as a result of the special board meeting this morning um, I'm asking to, uh, for approval to close the Masson building, also to redistrict into uh, high, a high school campus of two buildings, two middle school buildings, 10 elementary buildings, and one new beginning school building. And also uh, emphasize the fact that the board is under this item directing the superintendent to conduct a series of open community forums to address the concerns and questions of the redistricting of the Lorraine City School District. So that'll be an ongoing uh, series of events between now and probably uh, June. Recommend approval of item eight under operation matters. So move. Support. Discussion? Yeah, just, question. No. I just have a question for Dr. Branham. Um, we're looking at closing the mass and school. Is there a, a permanent uh, decision on what we're going to do with that building? Um, Mr. Dean, Nicole, nothing at this point, but obviously we will be, you know, once we have the students out of there, the programs out of there, then we'll uh, take a look at that and see what we're, uh, I think there's a two year time frame. If it remains closed, then we have to offer it for sale to charter schools, community schools. Um, we might be looking at it. It, it will be needing major improvements if we decide to use it for anything. So okay. that'll be under discussion in the future. Okay, thanks for that yes. window of, uh, of uh, how we're gonna be dealing with that over the next year or so, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion or questions? Yeah, I have a question. Where will the digital go? Digital is, there's a couple options for digital. Jane? Yes, well, is there any conflict with OSFC rules? of moving a charter school into a public school building. Okay. And again, as we go down this road, we'll bring further details in regard to student enrollment at the various buildings, programs, where they will be housed and that type of thing. Well, uh, just as long as we give parents, I would hope at least a, if possible, a 60 day notice as to how the redistricting reorganization the redistricting is going to affect their students their children so that someone whose child is now going to southview middle will know in advance whether that child will that still will be in let's say the eighth grade will now be going to either longfellow or johnny wilson this district unfortunately in the last few years has had a history of not giving early warnings and making people mad so I would hope that there's plenty of time for parents to adjust to, to that. So, and I know you'll do your best at doing that, Dr. Branham, so. Yes, sir. There is a motion on the floor with a second. We have a roll call, please. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Demacchia? Yes. Mr. Fallis? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Also under other matters uh, of the superintendent, item nine is the consider approval of the financial recovery plan that we just reviewed this evening. And item 10, the resolution to mitigate the balances of uh, the balance of financial deficits by exploring and researching additional cost cutting, cost cutting measures by October 31st, 2012. Um, the ending of that resolution is directing the superintendent and the treasurer to further explore and research additional cost cutting measures and report back to the board by that October deadline. And again, we'll be pursuing any and all avenues to bring forth to the board additional reductions. I move for approval of items nine and 10 under operations matters. Motion to approve items nine and 10. Second. Uh, before, Chairman, before, 
Hang on, please. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> the additional pieces that we've discussed, um, I think we're going to have to craft some language that is, I think, a little bit more aggressive. Um, and we can come back with that language that doesn't just talk about looking at. We need to make cuts. Um, so, you know, to say that you know, our instruction to, to the administration needs to be, um, we talked about a timeline and we talked about an amount that we're going to try and get to, but it has to be a directive um, not to just look at those pieces, but we have to say we're going to make those cuts. Um, does that make sense? Because um, otherwise we can say, well, we looked at this, we looked at this, we looked at that, and come back and not necessarily take action on that. Um, what, we're, what we're looking at is this deficit reduction we just done is not the end of anything, but really the beginning. And now we need to be able to take some time and carefully look at um, how we really shape our district over the next five years. So um, we're going to have to come back and, and refine that language. It'll allow us to go ahead and, and do the, the deficit reduction plan submission. But we need to um, have some more really in-depth discussion on what our goals need to be for reduction of the cost of operating over the next number of years. And, um, and then set some timelines and say we want to have, you know, $5 million reduced over the next five years or whatever that is, but not just a commitment to look, but a commitment to cut. Um, yeah, I, I, I see your point. Uh, and again, as long as it's a technically a, a four or a five year process, and I think what you're saying is can't continue to do business as we've been doing business. And, um, but for the next six months to eight months, I think we're pretty much done in reductions and going out to the community for new revenue. But again, looking at year two and year three, absolutely. I well, think we can, yeah, we can, it, yes. we can, uh, and I think we have to, though we might not be making the reductions, we have to target the reductions. We can't wait until we're back looking at a deficit reduction to start that conversation. Right. So I think the, um, the window of getting out of this with a gun to our head by the state, we're, we're maybe a little clear of that, but this will be the best time to really talk about and to plan those reductions um, because now we're not looking at cutting our jugular vein. We're not looking at bleeding out. We're looking at making some real strategic cuts um, that get us to the number that we need to be at. And I don't know what that number is. We need to look at student enrollment. Um, we need to look at what our enrollment is going to be in the next five, over the next five years. And um, some of the things that we've cut may not stay on the cut list. There are tons of things that some people think we've just, they've survived the cut, but they haven't. And um, so, you know, I don't want us to think that everything is status quo um, and that because this department or that idea or that piece didn't get cut this round, that we're off the, t the cutting table. So I think we're gonna stay on the cutting table. And um, at least from my conversation with board members, um, and for our community, we have to make significant changes in the cost of operating our school district, um, else we're going to be back here again, or the next board will be here again. So, and, and Mr. President, I would add, not only do we need to speak to reductions, but we also need to speak to revenue. And not only new revenue from the community on a tax levy, income tax issue, but um, new recruitment policies, uh, ways to generate new revenue. Personally, I see um, the new high school, and I know, I know that's four years down the road, but this is going to be a, a gym and a, a major attraction piece. And if it's state of the art that I think it's going to be, I think that the students in uh, community and charter schools are um, honestly going to flock to the high school. We got to make the middle school and the elementary buildings as well. But again, not only the negative cost reductions, but new generating initiatives. Well, when you, when you have your community meetings, what you're going to have to explain the reorganization. It's an excellent time to add to that all of the good things about our school district. You're going to get people there because when people think there's change, 
that's going to affect their family, their children, they're going to more likely than not go. What a wonderful opportunity. And we have talked about this, Dr. Branham. Uh, I noticed that the, the mayor of Cleveland, who runs that district, is going to have open enrollment in, in, our, in our kind of <laughs> Kimasabi Tonto emails. We were talking about it's time to take the mask off this school district. It's time to let this community know what our children get when they go to our schools that they do not get other places. Not that you ever beat up on the competition, that's not what you do. You just show you got better, you've got more, and we don't do that, and, and this is an opportunity where we're going to get people. So why don't you craft into your presentations not just where your child's gonna go to school, but what they're gonna get when they get there. And who knows that this may not attract some folks, because if we can, if we can attract students back to this district. That's a revenue source that doesn't come out of anybody's pocket. It's there. And, uh, and I just have one question to, before we vote, whether we, we have a $4.7 million deficit, period. We understand, I do at least better, why that is. And it's not as bad as it looks. But when do you think, Dr. Or, uh, Mr. Weber, we're going to run out of money? What's our cash flow look like? Are we going to, how close to the end of the next school year will we get? Do you have any idea yet? I'm going to say right around January 2013. Okay. About a year from now. What happens when that happens? I mean, we still have to pay the employees. Where, where, where do we go? Well, well we, would, we would go into fiscal emergency okay. before that, and then we would get All the... Right. Okay. Well, in, in my opinion, that's the way out of the woods is the fiscal emergency bit. So, okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Fallis. I'm sorry because I interrupted you. You had a comment or question. Well, I guess my my comment would have been that I'd like to see us move up the timeline on item number ten to June 30th. If we're gonna make some changes, the time to do that would be between school years. So, doing something in the middle of a school year probably is not very, very practical. So my recommendation would be to, I guess, take a look at some issues between now and June 30th and see if um, they make sense for implementation for the 12-13 school year. I, I think we're always looking at these issues. It's, uh, you know, the, that date is, is, is like an end date. But if you think that we're not going to be looking at them tomorrow morning, we're going to be looking at them tomorrow morning. I mean, it's, it's, I think I'm, what Mitch is referring I'm to is about, urgency. I'm just talking yeah. about, yeah, one, creating a sense of urgency. Number two is if there's something that's going to happen, it needs to, it needs to be finalized and formalized in the summer so it's implemented for a full school year. Now, are we going to get everything? No, this is a work in process. I agree yeah. with you, Bill. Yeah, after, after June, we're going to continue to refine how we operate Lorraine City School Districts to the benefit of our students. I'm just saying that, you know, setting a date of October is probably not the best date to come up with some, some additional um, solutions for our school district. And so we're, um, I think they, they clearly understand our urgency and our need to not kind of tone down our aggressiveness and cutting. So um, we'll expect that Dr. Brandon will come back with some more specific pieces around item 10. Um, I think we're comfortable with approving these as, as written with the expectation that there will be more clarity on number 10 with some um, specific specificity to date in amounts. Now that we've done all that, gentlemen, um, there's a motion on the floor, and we're ready for a roll call vote. Mr. DeMacchia. Yes. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Fallis. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Under other matters, uh, item 11, uh, Youth Art Month, recognition of also the Music in Our Schools Month. Uh, item 13 is the National School Breakfast Week and the National Nutrition Month, item 14. Under other matters, I recommend approval of items 11 through 14. Motion to approve. Is there support? Support. In the past, Dr. Branham, when we have had doing these honors. We have had art displays. We have had some 
at, the, at, 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 a, at a meeting in March? Would it be possible to have some of our student art on display at a board meeting? Maybe some a choir or something that for the music? So how about something for the music? Is there some? That would be the second meeting in March. Thank you. You already ahead of me on that. Thanks. Roll call. Item 11 to 14. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Mr. Demachia. Yes. Mr. Fallis. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Uh, new business. I think one of the um, things that has occurred as far as new business is the decision that the board made earlier today. Um, and that's pretty new. <laughs> uh, is there any board members, again, this, is a, this was a very difficult decision that we made, um, but there was a lot of information to support um, where we've kind of arrived. And um, this may generate more conversation um, over the next number of weeks, I'm sure. Um, as far as this, in terms of new business, one of the things that we want to make sure is that there is a very uh, structured communication process um, between the administration and the staff um, at all levels. Um, and we want to make sure that there is a certain seamlessness to the information sharing. And so, um, not to be over micromanaging, but we would like to know the schedule of such meetings and, um, and to also get report back directly to the board through Dr. Branham, um, the summary of those meetings. Um, we are in a scenario where there's going to be a lot of challenges the folks making have to implement the plan need to be part of making the plan and we need to have that kind of assurance that um that we've got that kind of uh, cooperative so uh, i think that's you know that's going to be a imperative and um so we have to hold each other accountable on those pieces i know some board members may i know mr debaki has some folks have some comments and um with the decision that we made today and i think it's a good opportunity for board members to express where they are we had a, as you know, many of you might know, we had a 4-1 vote. Um, we vote our conscious. We vote based on a lot of different reasons. Um, but after the vote is finalized, we then all move forward, marching to the same beat of the same drum. And so, but oftentimes, if we get this opportunity to express where we are, why we're there, it makes it a little bit more reasonable for us to move forward. There's like a huge elephant in the room. It's not invisible. So we just want to kind of talk about the elephant a little bit and um, so we can feel good moving forward. Mr. Debaki, I'll ask you first. Well, for, first, we're going to make a lot of tough decisions. There's no doubt that many of the decisions that we make are not going to be very easy. Uh, and, I, and I certainly agree that in, our, in this morning's conversations and the meetings that, uh, you know, one of the important things is that, uh, you know, not having the students around a construction site and the safety concerns that it could potentially bring up, I certainly agree with that. Uh, I also agree that, you know, having construction like that would be a, a great disruption to the education process of many of our students. Uh, with that being said, you know, there are a couple things that I, ha I do have some concerns about, you know, moving forward with this. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't support that motion uh, for a couple different reasons. Um, number one, we've made a lot of critical decisions in the past. And I think that we have always done them in a forum like here at a regular school board meeting. And I don't know if necessarily do, making a decision of that magnitude at this point in time was necessarily the right thing to do at Lorraine County Community College at 10 a.m. Uh, in a partnering session. Uh, you know, so I had some concerns about that. Uh, again, making a critical decision like this in, in, in this building project, um, we got to make sure we do it right. And, and I, I certainly do think that we are moving forward. We're going to make this work. Um, but uh, uprooting our students again, you know, I, I don't know if that's in the best interest of their education. 
Uh, we just got done concluding a very successful consolidation of our two high schools, and, and I think it's been amazing. The staff has done an excellent job with that. And now here we are again, and we're going to take these students and uproot them and, and put them in another building. And, uh, you know, I, I think that is certainly going to have an effect on those students and, and how they learn, the teachers, how they teach. Uh, and, again, you know, that was another major concern for me. Um, there were several questions that I'm not quite certain I'm, I'm very clear on, and maybe, uh, you know, again, that will be clarified here very soon, but I'm not certain what the classrooms are going to look like. You know, we're moving a significant number of students into a smaller facility, and that is concern for me looking at that facility. Uh, you know, for example, we have, let's say, 50 classrooms, 25 of them being taken up by special ed. Those aren't you know, don't quote me on that because I don't know if those are actual numbers, but, you know, wh how are we going to make 25 classrooms work? Uh, you know, are the classroom sizes going to be increased? Um, we have to do renovations to that facility. How long are those renovations going to take? Uh, at what cost to the district? You know, I, I know I saw some figures, but for some reason I just think that, you know, the cost of doing something like this is going to be greater than what we really think. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with placing our ninth graders into the middle school setting. And I know I, I just saw uh, the redistricting of, you know, moving our seventh and eighth graders out of there. And I just saw that for the first time. And now we're shuffling more students around. Uh, you know, what impact is that going to have on our community? What impact is that going to have on our parents? What impact is that going to have on the students? You know, when you're taking them out of their potentially home school and moving them across the district into another building. Um, And again, you know, the teachers got to adapt just as well. You know, how's this going to affect our, our teaching staff? And are we making sure that we're doing the right things to make sure that we can still educate at our greatest potential to, with our students? Um, you know, I just, you know, somewhere in the back of my mind, I have a feeling that, you know, this decision could potentially maybe, you know, cost us a loss of students. You know, you know speaking from a parental standpoint, you know, if I had to, you know, move my kid around the district and if I had an eighth grader and now I got to put them in a different school building that they have been in, you know, for I don't know how many years. We just opened that Whittier uh, middle, you know, and now we're going to take those kids out of there and put them in potentially one of two buildings. Uh, I just, you know, again, it was a, a very difficult decision to make and I, and I understand it's probably the, you know, the best of the two options that we had, uh, but there are some real concerns with making this move and uh, you know these are just some of the few reasons that I have for you know making you know my decision to, to vote against that and uh, you know again going back you know quite a ways back and I, I think Mr. Bieber alluded to it but you know that's this is one of the reasons why I originally supported a clean river site was because these potential problems are going to stir up our education system and let's not lose perspective of why we're really sitting in these seats. You know, we're here to make sure we make the best decisions for the education of our students. And, you know, does something like this really disrupt? Uh, how, how much does it disrupt the, the, the education process? Certainly, moving forward, I, I support, you know, any decision that we as a board have made, and I'm going to support that and, and, and do what I can to do to help, you know, make this right. Uh, but again, you know, again, this is just some of the concerns that I have. Uh, with the process that we went through this morning. Um, I just want to make one comment. I, I'm sure that everything that we, we do is going to have challenges, but I just, I just had this, this thought I wanted to kind of share that after, after two years, and, and I have to credit uh, uh, Mrs. Conabeer and the, uh, the, the staff at the New Lorraine High School, uh, I don't remember us being effective before we, put the, before we uh, moved everybody and, and, and combined them and got together. I mean, I think children are resilient. I think they're a lot more resilient than we are, and, and I'm going to put my faith in that. Let us not forget that Southview High School operated for most of its life with the more students in it than are going to be in it next year. It operated from 1969 to 2010. I don't know what the, uh, and it was, it was then 9 through 12. It was at the height of, uh, in, in 1970, the year it opened, 
There were 17,000 students enrolled in Lorraine City Schools. 17,000? Yes. Or 1,700? 17,000 in the district. Oh, district. It was the height of the baby boomers. And everything worked out fine. And I think, and as Bill said, kids are resilient. It'll work out. And when their grandchildren or children or, and grandchildren are going to a new school, that will look much, much better because the old school was taken down and the architect had the whole land to de design. People will be saying then, gee, I, I had a move when I was in high school, but now my child is getting the benefit of state-of-the-art high school. It looks great. That's what, that's what I was looking at this morning. Was it easy? No. But when you look at the greater good down the road, because we only have one chance to get this right. One chance to spend $73 million and do something this community will, will say 20 years from now, boy, were they, they on the spot. They did the, the, that was what I was thinking. I know there will be some inconvenience, but Southview, you know, is, it has is, is been around. It's not just recently, it's been around, so. And we don't want to characterize our decision as a good decision. It was a decision that we made that would, we believe was the better of not good choices. Um, so uh, if any of us had our druthers, I don't think this would have been a, the desirable place that we would be. Um, it, another reason why we're doing this is we have to make sure that as we're moving forward, we don't, um, the last time we had a challenge of this nature was, was dealing our site selection. And we got so caught up into one piece of it that we weren't talking about what we were gonna build. We have to be very careful that as we're dealing with the, this move to this, to, the, to this temporary site, that we're still very focused on what we're building as the new site. And if we start having too many challenges in terms of how we're communicating about it, then no one wants to talk. And if no one's talking, we're missing the opportunity to design for our community what's going to be the jewel of our community. So we have to be very careful for those of us in leadership, um, be it at the board level, at the administrative level, teachers, parents, that we don't spend too much time. Our energy and time have, has to be on how we do this transition, not whether or not we're going to do it, because we're going to do it, but we have to focus on qualitatively how we do it. We have to also simultaneously make sure we have good positive energy talking about the new building that we're in the design phase of. Um, to this morning's meeting, what we really announced was we're going to build a new high school where it's going to be at. It's going to have a beautiful gymnasium and it's going to have an auditorium. And that is the biggest outcome difference. We're going to still educate kids in some, some facility, but if we just focus on the challenges, then I think we're going to miss the opportunity to really uh, coalesce around um, what's going to be a visionary thing for our community. And if we want our building to look a certain way and have certain amenities in it, we really need to um, focus our energy in that direction. So any other comments, Mr. Fallis, please? Yeah, yes. Um, as, as I was taking a look, and I know some of my fellow board members were taking a look at making the decision um, this morning as to whether uh, we would build around the Lorraine High, current Lorraine High site or uh, make the decision to move the students to Southview. The focus was on the, the long-term aspect of the Lorraine City School District and where the high school would be. Um, and we came to the conclusion that uh, in order to build the, the best and highest use of a high school on the Lorraine High School site, it would be to demolish the current facility. And we all certainly recognize that there's going to be um, changes that students and parents are going to have to deal with over the next four years to accommodate that. But we were, again, as uh, Mr. Williams said, we were looking at this over a 50-year period. And, and yeah, there's going to there's gonna be some short-term pain. Um, but we're going to have a very beautiful facility uh, four years down the road. Um, and, and, and that's the main, main focus. I'm, excite, I'm very excited about that. And, um, but, but it was a very difficult decision because you don't want to you don't want to create disruption, but uh, with, a, with a goal in mind of the next 50 or 60 years having a beautiful facility, um, we, we thought that uh, that was where our vision was at. So um, we did recognize that there were issues, though. So thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Fallis, the, uh, thank you for the comments, and, and I think that uh, your statement will be confirmed by our ex architect who happens to be in the audience tonight, uh, Chris Smith. From now we would like to entertain a second hearing of the public. Again, please uh, come to the front podium, uh, address your comments to the board, and then following your comments, there's a sign-in sheet over at this table to sign in afterwards. We will supply you with the microphone. Please be courteous and kind, which I know this gentleman always is. And um, please feel free to come and express yourself, folks. Um, comments, questions, statements. And, uh, no, that's his problem. My name is Bill Kulix. I'm currently a small business consultant. I've been doing that for about 15 years. Previously, I ran my own business for about 22 years out in Southern California. I've got a little bit of knowledge about what can happen with down economies. I went through four recessions myself, learned a lot of things. One of the things that I, I well, there's actually a couple of lessons that I learned, and, and it's a trap that many small businesses fall into, and I think this can, this can happen with the, the school system, is you put so much attention on cutting expenses that you dilute your product. And by doing that, you end up losing customers because they don't want your product. So there's a, a point of diminishing returns and actually cutting the expenses becomes a detriment. I, you know, from what I've seen, I think you've done enough cuts. Now we need to put our attention on how we're going to increase revenues. And passing levies is, is one way to do it. I don't think it's the most effective. You need to do, Mr. S Mr. Smith brought up a good point, do some marketing, sell the school system. You got a great building, but what people want is an education. The building facilitates that, but you've got to let people know that they're going to get a, a, an excellent education. And so I think putting attention on how we can make the school system great. I graduated in 65 from Amro King. We got a tremendous education. Many, many people are, are in public service now. They run their own businesses. They've been very successful. And we attribute that to the great education we got. There's no reason that we can't do that now. But we've got to get out of this idea of, well, how are we going to handle this financial problem? You handle the financial problem by getting more students in, by, by making your school system more successful. The other thing is, um, other lesson I learned is that uh, if you want to increase revenues, the, the concept of lost income is so important. And that's the income that you could have had, you could have made, but you didn't. If we drag our feet on marketing and not, not letting people know how good the school system is or, or it can be, we're going to lose a lot of income. You're looking at, I, I believe it's about $5,700 per student. You start multiplying that out by 10, 100, or 1,000, and all of a sudden that deficit starts going away. So. My, my comment is that I think the cost cutting has is, is gone far enough. I think we ought to start looking and putting all of our attention on how we can increase income. And that's going to be done by improving that school system and making it not just a good school system, but a great school system. That's it. Thank you. Are there any others? Thank you. Where are we? The announcement of our next board meeting? Which is what date? I don't even know. Second Thursday, Thursday in March. Second Thursday in March, but what is the date of the second Thursday in March? You're supposed to know that you're present. <laughs> well, if, you know, I, Jim, I told you that you're supposed to always know the date of the board meeting. As president, I assigned that to you. Uh, only when I was president. You got a calendar date? I, I got one. It's uh, March the 8th. The next morning board meeting will be Thursday, March the 8th, 6.30, here at Frank Jacinto. I now need a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fellas? Yes. 
Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Demacchia? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. yes. Thank you. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV20, WLCS. To purchase a high-quality copy of the program you just viewed, please call Lorraine City Schools Television at 282-8400.